Greetings! Today I'd like to share with you an amazing piece of vintage technology, and that of course is the spectacular looking calculator sitting next to me, all 42 pounds of it. This is the Frieden EC130, and it's considered by many to be the very first solid state electronic calculator. Now I thought that this calculator has so many interesting facets to it that it would make a great video talking about everything from the outward casing, which let's be real is the sexiest calculator you've ever seen, to the clever electrical design within it. So sit back and relax as I talk more about the Frieden EC130. Before the 1960s, calculators were mechanical or electromechanical, so they had lots of moving parts and required plenty of cleaning and maintenance to ensure those parts were moving efficiently. When electronic calculators became available, their speed and reliability were unmatched and the mechanical calculators were quickly obsoleted. Frieden knew this and so they started to create what would become the EC-130. The principal architect of this project was Robert Reagan. Since microprocessors hadn't yet been invented and integrated circuits were just too new and too costly, it was designed using all discrete PNP germanium diodes and transistors. The end result was a revolutionary machine that packed in a lot of power in what was then a very compact design. The case has beautiful lines and curves and a sort of futuristic look to it, almost like a prop you'd see on Star Trek, but this thing is no prop. It actually sold for $2,100 in 1964. Alright, it's time to boot up the machine. Now this calculator uses reverse Polish notation. It was actually the very first to do so. This means you enter the numbers before the function. So if I want to add to this total, I enter the value, then hit the plus sign. You have a 5-inch green phosphor electrostatic deflection CRT screen. Remember, this was before LEDs or LCDs. It displays up to 13 characters, but you also have a visible multi-register stack. You have a 10-key keyboard with the basic functions you'd expect out of a calculator, but what's really interesting is while the calculator is processing the calculation, it locks down the last key you pressed. This way, you don't enter in the commands faster than it can handle them. Now, in the event of an overflow, you'll have to click the overflow button to unlock that last key. The thumb wheel lets you select fixed decimal point locations. The calculator actually supports more positions than this, but the dial limits you. On early models of the machine, you had different options altogether. When you change the decimal position, it changes it for all four registers of the stack. There's also a store and recall function available. This is for storing values into the memory register, which is not displayed on the screen. It works by clicking the store button to store the result of a calculation or a number that you've manually entered, and then you recall it so that you can use it in a future calculation. To open up the machine, you just need to loosen two screws on the bottom and then gently remove the top case. And here are the innards of the machine. You'll notice that the circuitry is contained on these seven removable boards. Three of them are wired together. With the CRT, you'll actually notice that the neck extends just past the rear end of the housing, which I thought was a little interesting, probably in an effort to keep the size of the machine somewhat manageable. And then you have the power supply circuitry on the right. If you power up the machine with the top off, you can adjust the potentiometers if you need to change the horizontal or vertical position of the text, or if you want to adjust the focus. This calculator is definitely unique and historic, and one I've been after for several years. I was fortunate enough to find one locally just a few weeks ago, and I couldn't be more happy. There was also a 132 model released not long after this one, which added support for a one-button square root function, as well as additional decimal point settings. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.